you know what, people? There's a lot of disrespect going on right now. I'm talking about nationwide of HBCU. With all these preseason Ohio Valley Conference players, all of them, they still pick in Tennessee State, middle of the pack. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is, the, my opinion, the number two HBC football school in the country. They theoretically have more tradition in NFL players drafted than any other HBCU. So history is there. I think they're going to win the OVC and get in the playoffs because of one player in particular. What I want folks to understand is that Kayvon Pope, when he originally was supposed to go to Ohio State, the man played receiver. Yeah. He was a receiver and a transfer and a mid linebacker. He was one of those kids where he played every part of the field, right? Like every position on the team. But the thing is, that's actually great for the new kind of offense. When you have a linebacker with any kind of receiver skill, I'm not saying you got to be Jerry Rice, but any kind of receiver skill and that kind of speed, yeah, um, that's your middle linebacker. And that's who Tennessee State has <laughs> as a middle linebacker. Man with hands, 6'2". I believe now he's up to 235, 225, something like that. But coming out, he was a 6'2", 205 receiver. That's who you have. That's what I think the big difference is going to be. With the amount of preseason all conferences they have at Tennessee State, I don't care what people say about the Ohio Valley Conference being an older conference it really is, but it's not that deep. I really have put Smithy State as my second best uh, HBCU team behind Jackson State. I'm not doing the preseason before the season thing. I think that's kind of not intelligent. What I'm talking about is where it's going to end up. They'll be the second best HBCU team out there in the season. They will also win the Ohio Valley Conference. Put money on that. Are you seeing the plays I'm seeing? One of the reasons why people put players at linebacker or cornerback is because they have lack of hands. They can't catch. They don't have the vision to break the hole. They can't break a tackle. This man can. I mean, honestly, he really can. He could be a running back, be a fullback, be a tight end, be a receiver on this level. But he knows his best chance will be playing middle linebacker. And the whole thing about him leaving Ohio State, you basically waited four years. You were told you're going to be a starter. You have one of the best recruiting classes at the time involving you as a centerpiece. In your time at Ohio State, they changed the defense. Ohio State used to have a, uh, what was it, a 4-3, three, three linebackers and four linemen. Going into a senior season, they switched to a two linebacker only defense, bringing the safety down. Basically a 4-2-5, which meant only two linebackers won't get to play. That's why one of the other linebackers transferred out at the beginning of that week as well. 
That's why he transferred. That's why he was why he was cut, why he was upset. You have dreams of getting mama to the to the, uh out of the house, out of the hood or whatever you want to call it, right? And what happens? You put in your work for four years, and right when you're ready to finally get seen, because they told you grind and grind and grind, and then you get your chance. You're not getting your chance, and then you realize the package that they're being called is your package, and then the coach tells you come back. That's the reason why. Stress, frustration, lack of playing time. Now, sure, you you say he could have been better. He could have forced his way on the field. Ohio State is not the University of Texas. They have actual depth at linebacker. That was a shot. I know. So what that means is, you go in there, you're already behind some sophomores who are first round, second round picks. And they recruit more freshmen behind you who are first round, second round picks. That's how it happens on the FBS level. Whatever they say to get you there, they'll say. But it's up to you to break out and dominate every play to get any kind of look. And then when you get those looks, they can be taken away in an instant. That's the story of Kevon Pope. That's why, with all that being said, he's gonna have an impact. Maybe my swag fans will understand this. He's gonna have a James Houston impact. And yeah, sure, there are people that say, well, you know, he's not, how I put this nicely, he didn't show anything on tape. That's the reason why he's going to have a James Houston impact. This is his last chance to get seen. The only way he could have got any look by NFL is going to Tennessee State. Reason why? Tennessee State's one of their biggest alums is Eddie George. If Eddie George can forgive you for Ohio State and bring you into the school at Tennessee State and you flourish, maybe get into the playoffs, you will definitely get seen by the NFL. You may get drafted by the NFL, which will be a big F you to Ohio State. But it would be a big shot for HBCUs and FCS schools who look at the fact that these are the kind of kids that need to come come to HBCUs and FCS schools. The Tennessee State has built up a powerhouse that people are not looking at or thinking about. By getting the quarterback from Austin P, who was the freshman of the year, they already have a returning well, sophomore now, but was freshman of the year from Tennessee State at right. Getting Mr. Pope, a senior, a middle linebacker, they have revamped this team. Every hole they had, they fix. So people may say Tennessee State's middle of the pack. I'm picking them to beat the win the Ohio Valley Conference. You don't believe me? I want you to look back at this video in November. Where they pulling 
the playoff picture for Tennessee for um, FCS playoffs. And lo and behold, guess who won't be in there? One of the reasons why is Well looking at their schedule, I mean hands down. This is a schedule that every single person well besides one had been one HBCUs to do. Cause you know the narrative now. We figured the narrative out. When you try to make that move up and people see threatened, or you not bowing down and kissing their ass, they want you to play the biggest dog in the block. So they want to put you back where they think you belong. It's sort of like reverse bullying. They can't do it, so they want someone else to do it for you. But this is the schedule that Tennessee State has got. Eastern Washington could be a win. If they win one of the first three games, which are very doable, they may only lose one more game in conference play. And with that schedule, the only three losses, they're in the playoffs. And also the number two HBCU in the country. Coach Simmons, I am out.